Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I often get asked the question, why uh, did you guys build Trustero? Why did you enter such a, a noisy space with lots of uh, different GRC competitors, tools, readiness tools, and such? And the bottom line is it boils down to this, and, and that is we found that readiness tools and other tools that create workflows for uh, folks like you that are uh, trying to uh, uh, get pet through a compliance sprint, th they just created more work. In the workflows that they created, they actually created more work for, for all of us. And so we believe that AI could create a next level of automation that would simplify the most tedious compliance tasks. Things like building and, and mapping uh, your content to controls, uh, being able to do assessments within your uh, teams, um, collecting evidence and collecting the proper evidence that a control uh, actually is asking for. Um, and, and so we built uh, what we refer to as compliance AI, which is our, our GRC platform leveraging AI that that virtually can help you uh, uh, on your path to automating your compliance sprints to any framework. Next slide, Michael. So some customers though, in, in our conversations, uh, while we were walking them through what we had built with Compliance AI said, they needed to specifically solve one uh, uh, item. Uh, within uh, their compliance sprint. Maybe it was, again, doing uh, internal assess uh, assessments or answering uh, a long questionnaire, or maybe it was evaluating uh, another partner's compliance uh, or so forth. Next slide, Michael. And we said, look, I think, I think Trustero can help. We could use AI just to solve the hardest thing about compliance. And today, um, one of the things that we're gonna discuss is, Nick is gonna be here to discuss all of these uh, use cases that, um, that AI can solve. And so today, Trustero goes to market in two ways. One is our compliance AI GRC end-to-end -end tool. And the other is an a la carte um, um, uh, offering where you can choose one of many different co-pilot uh, offers uh, to help you with things like uh, full audit scans, uh, security questionnaires, so automating the complexity of answering security questionnaires. Uh, like I said, report scans, so uh, uh, scanning other SOC 2 reports and getting a readout without having to read a report. Um, uh, so I'm going to hand the ball over today to Nick, our head of product, and he is actually going to take you through uh, our, uh, our, our webinar today. Great. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, so I'll take you guys through big picture uh, what some of these AI powered features are, and then I will uh, uh, dive into and actually show you guys a few of uh, the examples. Um, so I'll actually show the, the product in action. So um, first one I'll, I'll start with is our- you know, I'm gonna, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment and then share again because we have a couple of people that can't see the screen. So I'm just gonna, yeah. sorry sorry to sorry to mess up your flow there. No problem. I'm just just take no a problem. second. Yeah, we need to make sure everybody can see. Yeah, sounds good. While, while Michael's doing that, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just, um, I'll, I'll pick up with audit scan. So the idea on audit scan and looks like, People are able to see, wonderful. Um, so that's that first box over on the right. Um, audit scan, what it does is it actually evaluates your controls to see if, if they're satisfied. So it's going to look at the combination of the control language, parent policy, and all the evidence that's attached uh, to tell you whether or not you're actually walking a walk, uh, walking the walk on the, on the presentation itself um, or on the uh, uh, control itself. Uh, and it goes beyond just doing kind of simple yes, no checks. There are some tools out there that'll do things like let you know if uh, you don't have MFA uh, enabled for all your users, for example. Um, uh, Audit Scan can do that, uh, but it can do a whole lot more. It can actually evaluate the contents of screenshots, uh, a variety of written documents, and really harnesses the power of 
AI and large language models uh, to do that. So that's audit scan. Security questionnaires, that's something that Scott already touched on. Um, the idea here is if you're if you're like us, uh, you may from time to time um, get questionnaires as part of the kind of the buying process, the procurement process. So before somebody um, uh, wants to uh, actually sign on the dotted line, they want to know about your security practices, and that may augment or um, uh, you know even even go above and beyond what uh, say a a SOC 2 or ISO 27001 or other common kind of framework uh, will lay out for you. So sometimes there's just additional things that organizations want to know. Um, and uh, answering those can be quite uh, time consuming, labor intensive, and uh, they also require expertise to answer correctly. So it's not just anybody who can usually answer one of those. Um, and getting like thoughtful, well-written answers is pretty, pretty challenging. Uh, so we heard about this and actually uh, built uh, our security questionnaire co-pilot, so our SQ product, um, and we have a couple of flavors of it. Uh, we have our advanced, what we call our advanced version, and what that actually do does is it um, just uses your organization's controls, policies, and evidence uh, that are in our system. It uses those as the basis for answering questions. And, and that's, um, I'll be showing you guys an example of that. But um, what's so uh, interesting about that is it's actually based on what you are doing. Uh, so it's based on your actual practices, your actual evidence. And um, there's no additional work on your part other than just ask the question and let the system give you the answer. So that's our advanced product. And then we have our basic product. Uh, and um, uh, we it's only really basic in comparison to the advanced. Uh, it's on par or better than any other uh, kind of knowledge-based questionnaire management system you might see out there in the marketplace. Um, and I'll, I'll be showing you that as well. The idea here is that you can actually provide a, 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 a set of uh, previous question and questions and answers, and it uses those as the basis for answering questions. So rather than looking at your live environment, It'll, it'll rely on that. And you can actually use those, those two things in tandem. So sometimes there are certain facts about your organization that may not be covered in your GRC policies or controls, um, additional information. And, and then it's just a matter of get it into a knowledge base. And then um, our questionnaire copilot will rely on that. So uh, that's security questionnaires. And then um, uh, we'll be... Also be showing you guys report scan. Uh, the idea here is we read SOC 2 reports, so you don't have to. It gives you kind of a summary, an at-a-glance summary of what is contained in that SOC 2 report um, so that you have you have some idea before maybe opening it up yourself and reading it in detail about what you're likely to, to find in there. Uh, so that can be helpful in kind of third-party risk situations or if there are organizations that you need to scrutinize, um, that's what report scan does. Um, and then uh, tailored guidance, uh, that feature, uh, the, the, that exists for um, times when you are um, uh, operationalizing your controls. So say you have some new control in your environment. Um, what we do is we actually uh, look at the tools that you use throughout your organization, the other third-party services, and then we give you guidance based on those services about how to put... Um, your uh, uh, procedures into action. So um, for example, if you use uh, Amazon Web Services, we're gonna give you one set of guidance versus if you use Azure, uh, it would be a different set of guidance. So that's that's tailored tailor guidance. And then the last one is um, our ability to collect information and then intelligently wire it up to the right places. So the idea here is that um, uh, we collect evidence from uh, third parties, and then we actually put it uh, uh, on the control where it's needed. Um, and uh, that's in contrast to some other solutions that may collect data, put it in a data room, and then it's up to you to figure out how to sort it out. We actually connect it all the way through, and we have intelligent mapping there um, that uh, uh, will also make suggestions based on um, uh, uh, 
if you were to bring in your own custom control, for example, create a control from scratch or upload controls to our system, we would also be able to provide you recommendations there uh, uh, using our AI technology as well. So that's the five uh, kind of high level biggest um, uh, AI use cases that we've attacked and uh, kind of a, a, a quick tour through those. Yeah, Nick, why don't you, can you uh, give us a little bit of information around kind of why this works? Why this works the way that way that it does, and what you and the team have built uh, that that kind of allows Trustero AI to be so powerful. Yeah, happy to. So the concept here is what we call a trust graph. So now a little bit of uh, geeky terminology, but a graph uh, from uh, mathematics isn't just lines and charts. Uh, th this is the type of graph that has nodes and edges, or you could just think of it as connections between different important pieces of information. And so in Trustero, what we do is we catalog all of these important pieces of information and how they're interrelated uh, to each other. Um, and that then allows us to grab uh, just the information that's important and, and reason about it. So it, it all kind of starts though with this base of the trust graph. And then um, depending on the particular uh, use case, the particular, you know, so whether it's answering a questionnaire or perhaps doing a control uh, examination, then what we do is we just go into the trust graph and pull out the most relevant information. Um, and then next slide, then we leverage uh, LLMs and, and then and other um, uh, automation at times to then reason about that information that we've pulled out of our, our trust graph. Um, so in the case of the control, it would be, here's the information about this control, its objective, the evidence, the policy, and so forth. Uh, now, given this test that needs to be conducted uh, and this evidence that's related to the control, uh, does it pass or not? Uh, so that's that's kind of the essence of the way that an audit scan works. And then there's a similar process that happens for questionnaires and other features. So it, it's basically we assemble just the right information. We uh, do some reasoning about it, and then we're able to give good, actionable feedback uh, to our users. And Nick, if you could, because we get this question a lot, how is this different than just you know firing up ChatGPT or your LLM of choice and just asking your questions about security and about your environment, about compliance? Yeah, so I think the biggest difference is uh, the the automation that we're able to bring to bear. So while some of this, and I know I did explain it conceptually, is we just ask a question. Uh, there's a lot that goes into, first of all, selecting the data that's in the trust graph. Um, and then uh, second of all, it's not just a single question we ask uh, for for uh, some of these things. It's actually dozens and dozens of questions, and able to, in order to render a, a, a proper answer. So, uh, uh, in principle, this is all stuff somebody could do, I suppose, if they wanted to spend hours and hours at the Chat G GPT console. Um, but we've we've brought together a ton of stuff into kind of one place and and orchestrated all that, uh, so it's very simple for people uh, to use. And you've you've uh, set yourself up for a great tangent into into some live some live product here. So to show you what to show the uh, the folks on the line here what those multiple questions getting answered all at once look like. So I'm going to hand the ball to you, and uh, at this point you can walk us through some of this stuff. Great. Okay, so I think, uh, so we'll have to be a little agile here, Michael. It's saying, I don't have, uh, it says host oh. disabled participant screen sharing. So I think you got to- Let me, let off. me, let me fix it just a minute. Yeah. 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 No worries. Hey, hey nobody's perfect. <laughs> okay. Let me make you a, I'm going to make you a co-host. A co-host, you should be able to share your screen. There we go. Okay. Here I go. Okay, so uh, you guys are all now looking at the uh, Trustero application. Um, and I just started here on the dashboard um, just to orient you on what's going on in this demo account. This is an account that's provisioned with our SOC 2 content. So you can think of this as an example organization that's going through a SOC 2. Um, and 
I think I'll, I'm going to do one thing a little bit out of order from the order I talked about it um, on the previous slide. Uh, we'll actually start with the evidence mapping because it kind of makes the rest of the demo make more sense. So in this case, again, this account, um, uh, these are our what we call our receptors. So receptors are integrations that gather evidence from third parties. So in this case, we've got a you know we got kind of a representative set of these receptors set up. We've got a cloud provider, background checks, security awareness training, et cetera, down the list. Um, and so it's important for you guys to to understand this is uh, we're we're gathering uh, evidence from these sources. And, and then that is uh, kind of the raw material that gets refined into these uh, good answers that the AI is able to provide. Uh, so the things I'm going to be taking you guys through today, the examples are primarily going to rely on uh, information that's coming from this AWS receptor. Uh, we also have receptors for other cloud environments, uh, uh, Azure, Google uh, Cloud, et cetera. So, um, so that's just a little bit of orientation. And then as I mentioned before, um, from uh, uh, from the receptor, um, we're gathering evidence from a variety of sources, and then we're actually sending those out to uh, um, all the controls that need the information. And, and we'll be taking a closer look at some of these controls in a little bit, um, but you'll see how the evidence is kind of kind of showing up there. So, that is the bit on kind of evidence mapping and how how it maps through and flows through to each of the controls. And so with that set, and I'll take you guys over to audit scan. Um, and uh, what we've got here in this audit scan uh, uh, page, this is showing various audit scans that were conducted over time with the oldest ones at the bottom, newest one at the top. Um, and this is showing you guys a journey from uh, red, stuff is not ready, all the way through uh, 50 out of 50 passing. Uh, so it's sort of showing a fairly typical journey for somebody in our platform where they'll get started, they've got some issues, Arrow will point out some things, they fix them over time, and then, hey, you get everything done. Um, you can run this in uh, a, a few different ways. So one is you can actually conduct an audit scan of a, a complete audit. So in this case, this SOC 2 account has uh, 50 controls in it. You can also conduct a scan of any one control at any time that you want. So um, do, uh, and you can also do a subset, uh, arbitrary subset of controls as well. So there's different ways you can run this. Um, and, uh, and so if we open up this original one, it's saying you've got lots of issues. Um, we do some kind of sanity checking at the beginning where we say, um, uh, you know, if these things aren't done correctly, it's quite unlikely you're in good shape. So just kind of heads up. And in this case, it's flagging the fact that, you know, one of the controls didn't even have any evidence on it. It's pretty hard to pass uh, an examination if you have no evidence. So that's why it's flagging that. And it'll do similar other things. Um, It'll warn you, so by default, it won't run uh, if you failed these pre-audit checks. So that's what's happened there. Um, but you can override that override that, and say, no, you know what? I really do want to, to go. And uh, you can see in this case, there were lots of issues. That's what these kind of fuchsia colored exclamation points mean. Uh, it didn't go so well uh, at first because there, there were lots of challenges uh, uh, going on. But over time, uh, they graduate through and eventually they get to passing. And um, at this point, I usually like to then lens in on a specific control because I think this makes a lot more sense if we kind of look at the details of a of a particular control. So I'll, I'll, I'll jump over here um, and uh, bring up uh, a control, which is um, our production production data in transit control. Um, and you're able to see the three types of checks that we're conducting. Um, and the first is a governance layer check. This is basically making sure that the language of the control itself um, is consistent with its parent policy. So we've got that kind of, kind of check. We have a completeness check. Does the control have all the evidence it needs? And then we have what we call our spot check. This copy is a little old. You might notice it says passes a random check. It's actually not random anymore. 
Uh, it was in the very early versions. Um, now it's it's pretty comprehensive. Um, so that's a that's a big picture on what's happening. And if we crack open this control and sorry, that's the at rest one. If we crack open this control, um, we can take a closer look at it. And so everybody can see control objective is here. Transmission of production data classified as sensitive or confidential uh, is securely encrypted. And you can see it's got this AWS ACM evidence attached to it. And if we look at then the result of the audit scan, you can see, and back here, you can see what it actually did. It evaluated the control um, and pointed out that it does indeed have this AWS ACM evidence, uh, which is what it would need to be able to evaluate it. And then it uh, points out here that the evidence does indeed support that it's encrypted uh, using this particular uh, algorithm. Um, so in this case, it's saying you're in good shape. Um, it's also passed this governance layer uh, uh, test, and it's saying that the policy does contain the objective and uh, that these things are consistent. Um, one interesting note on this is when we were first building and testing this feature, we ran uh, audit scans on a number of previous, uh, previously conducted audits that actually passed. And uh, these things didn't always line up. Uh, and across even those successful audits. So one thing that's pretty cool about audit scan, um, you know, it doesn't get tired. It doesn't need breaks. It'll run when you you tell it to run and it's pretty thorough. Uh, and, and so it'll help you avoid, um, you know, getting gaps or exceptions uh, in your compliance process. So that is a bit about audit scan. Um, anything else, uh, Michael or Scott, that you think I should cover here? No, I think that was very thorough, Nick. Um, uh, have you have you seen any like edge use cases? Put you on the spot here, but I know, but any edge use cases where um, uh, audit scan has helped with pre assessments or anything like anything like that? Yeah, yeah, good one. So, and that also brings up sort of how this is meant to be used. Um, yeah, we definitely recommend folks use this. Kind of headed into critical moments, like maybe it's ahead of beginning uh, an audit period. Um, maybe it's as a as a element of you know regular internal audit practices that an organization may have. Maybe you already are conducting you know quarterly checks, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, the the control matches policy one that has found quite a few things where where you know. Uh, Maybe in one place it says quarterly, you know, you do something quarterly. In another place it says you do it monthly. Um, so uh, being able to flag those things and just give people a heads up, uh, that's been uh, that's been very helpful. Something I always like to bring up as the uh, as the lily head of marketing here, uh, we we chose to torture me by giving me a bunch of HR controls just to see if I can handle them uh, when we did our our most recent SOC two, and I don't know anything about laptop policies or, you know, background check policies or how certainly how to provide evidence for those or how to, you know, prove that we have a policy that matches our evidence. But I used uh, audit scan, like right off the bat, when none of my controls were, were completed, I just ran audit scan and audit scan told me exactly what to do. And I was able, I was able to fulfill five, five HR controls as a marketing person, which I thought was, was a pretty cool use case uh, or for what Trustero does. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Okay. That's great. Uh, so let's then, um, and this is just a, uh, so that's actually tailored guidance. I'm going to come back to tailored guidance actually. And let's, let's move next to a uh, security questionnaire. So um, I mentioned at the top, we've got uh, basic, we've got advanced um, in, in this uh, um, uh, in here, what we actually did is we threw a complete sig light at uh, our uh, questionnaire copilot. And we uh, intentionally did it in an account that had a very sparse or maybe absent knowledge base. I think it may have had like two or three answers, really not much. Um, and we asked it to do the whole uh, sig light. Now, for some of them, 
uh, it was not able to answer. And so uh, it'll tell you that uh, if it is unable to do it, it'll, it'll, it'll just say that. And you always have the ability to edit, override, provide a manual answer. So that's what is happening here uh, with, with a handful of them. But as you guys can see, for the vast majority, it was able to take a crack at answering these questions. And we already talked about the um, part of why I showed you guys that encryption control. Um, there is a related question that comes up in SIGLite, uh, question 20 here. Do you have documentation that describes policies, procedures, or guidelines for website encryption or uh, public facing websites? Uh, so kind of same ballpark. Um, and what Arrow QC Advanced was able to do is it recognized this question and was able to pull the same kind of information out of the trust graph that it used as part of the audit scan to be able to answer this question. So this is completely uh, AI generated. Yes, we have documentation that describes policies, procedures, and guidelines for website encryption. Uh, here it's saying we use AWS ACM, um, ensuring secure HTTPS encryptions. We have a secure configuration policy, which covers the rules of effective use of cryptography, cryptography to protect blah, 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 uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this, is pretty, this is a pretty good answer. This is the kind of answer that I actually would love to be able to write. I don't know about those of you who are uh, watching this, this answer would take me a while to write. Uh, and it probably, you know, I wouldn't remember maybe off the top of my head, some of the details, um, I'd have to go look things up. I'd have to cross reference it. This answer took about a minute to generate, um, and, uh, can be done at any time, can just be triggered at any time. So this is an example of, kind of sim similar kind of trust graph stuff going on, but applied to solve a different problem. Hey, two, two things, Nick. One, we're at about 15 minutes, and so you have about 10 minutes left. And two, in the spirit of putting Nick on the spot, and this since this is a progress report uh, webinar and we showed security questionnaire a few months ago, what's, what's new and what's coming up? What's coming up with security questionnaire? And you were not yeah. prepared for this question, so see how you do. Yeah, yeah, good one. Well, uh, we're about to actually release our questionnaire version 1.1, which includes um, a few th a few kind of uh, uh, things that make uh, the user experience smoother. So our top priority on this was to focus on the hardest problem, which is answering the question. Uh, there's a few things about the experience in the app that weren't quite as nice as we want them to be. So we're working on making that better. Um, we're working on making um, updating the knowledge base easier. We now actually have the ability to ask questions in app. Previously, you had to only up upload a spreadsheet. Um, so just a lot of kind of quality of life things uh, based on some friction that we we knew was in there. Uh, uh, now, now that we're answering questions well, we're getting back to figuring out those user experience things. Hey, Nick, um, since you and I uh, have had the pain in multiple stops in our career of answering questionnaires, what do you think are the never heard before things about Trustero's uh, AI co-pilot questionnaire uh, capability that uh, that are a game changer for the space? Yeah, I mean, the just the quality of these answers and how quickly they're produced and the fact that they're backed by the facts. Uh, these aren't just simple yes, no, take my word for it kind of answers. These are thorough, complete answers that have the details you need in them. And again, like I said, these are the kind of questions or the kind of answers I wish I could write, you know, in like five or 10 times as much time. It just, it, it, uh, it really writes very good answers. And then as we know also, you know, this isn't just a feature for our clients. This is something we're using ourselves. It is making our lives a lot better. Uh, so we know from personal experience and, and this is just something we're not seeing for, from anybody else out there. Good one. Okay. I think then I'm gonna move on um, to tailored guidance. So, 
Um, this is a, a related control, this is our production data, rest control. Um, and I mentioned that, you know, uh, we will take, um, I should probably just open this whole thing. So we usually start with um, high level. Uh, what are some things that somebody wants to keep in mind in terms of um, uh, operationalizing the control? What are some things they should understand about the pre procedure? And then again, uh, because we know certain things about uh, this uh, uh, environment, we're then able to take those kind of high level principles and expand them out into details that are relevant for um, what they actually use. So in this case, what you're seeing is a range of advice for what you should be doing in an AWS, because there's that AWS receptor, some things you should keep in mind about Google, some things you should keep in mind about GitHub. Um, and this feature actually, uh, we have a, a V2 of this coming very soon. It's pretty good, pretty helpful, um, but we have some things that are gonna make it um, even kind of more concise uh, and more on target than it is today. So pretty helpful already. It's about to get even, even better. Uh, so that's tailored guidance. And then I think, uh, and, uh, and then I'll, I'll move over to our last uh, feature I think that we're gonna highlight, which is um, report scan. So, you know, the, the really short version here is um, uh, we read SOC 2 reports, so you don't have to. Uh, that's sort of the, the, the thing that we're going for. Now, today, you still do have to open up that SOC 2 report, but we feel like we're giving you a boost and we're giving you kind of a head start on what are some things that you want to look for. Um, and so uh, the idea here is all you have to do is upload a PDF um, and you upload that PDF and then we'll start analyzing its contents and we're gonna give you um, uh, kind of a thumbnail sketch of what's going on inside of that SOC 2 report. So first thing we'll do, uh, we'll give you the uh, company name uh, whose report it is. We'll um, tell you uh, what type of audit it was. Uh, so we can read um, SOC 2 type two as well as type one reports. Um, uh, right off the top, we tell you, is it qualified, unqualified, pass or fail, basically, uh, or, you know, pass or, you know, some there's issues uh, to look at. We also flag how old the report is. Um, and if it's over 12 months old, they probably have another report. And so you want to go get it. Um, we uh, also uh, gather data about the auditor. Uh, in this case, it's saying... Uh, not recognized, you know, Coal Fire is a, is a well-known audit firm, um, but it's not recognized because it's not in the particular list that we use. We have a third party uh, list that we use um, uh, uh, to provide some, some additional uh, metadata about the firm. So that list just didn't contain Coal Fire, which is why you're seeing that. Um, then we tell you which criteria was addressed in the report. Uh, and, uh, if somebody were to say, skip a criteria, we would flag that, uh, we would let you know if that's missing. Uh, and then the final thing is, uh, we tell you about, um, how many, uh, non-occurrences there were and how many exceptions there were. Uh, and, uh, one bit of feedback that, uh, we are working on right now, this is super high level. So this is kind of like, oh, this is a fun, you know, one way to think about it. Oh, this is a fun mystery. Now I want to go see what those two exceptions were. We know even better would be, here's exactly what the exception was. Um, uh, here's the, the, the test that failed. Here's the management response to that, if it exists. That's all, uh, all stuff we're working on. Um, uh, but this is, yeah, so this is our... This is our V1 of it. Uh, and, and again, the idea here, give, give people a boost. I think over time, uh, this is just gonna get more and more capable and include more details that people really want in order to do um, third-party risk management, vendor management type stuff. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the tour of the AI features. Hey, Nick, I got a really good question here, and I, I don't know if the answer is, I honestly don't know if the answer is yes or no, but again, since this is a in the spirit of progress report, and that all this stuff is, you know, getting better and better all the time, here it is. Does the knowledge base allow for hierarchy? It's like, could you complete a SIG, but limiting the context to a specific product 
for service and only its associated documentation. I feel like we've talked about this before, but I don't know if I don't know if we're there yet. I'm I'm actually not sure if this is a this might be like a scoping or line of business question. Like maybe you have two business units and you want to answer it based on one and not on the other. If, I think if, that I think that's right. But Jeff, if you wanna if you wanna elaborate, we can uh, we can get the question answered live here. But we'll give you a second to elaborate, Jeff, and I'll move on to Jeffrey, and I'll move on to the next. I'll take the screen back while we give him a second to elaborate on that question. Yeah, and I don't know. I I can if if um I could just answer based on what I think the question is about, which is about multiple business units or something like that, or multiple product uh, lines. Nick Jeff says that's correct. Very okay, great. Yeah. So uh, no, today it it is one sort of undifferentiated knowledge base per account. However, we have clients um, who they essentially segment um, that we we essentially have like different accounts provisioned per line of business, and that's how they handle it. So they would have you know uh, product line A in one account, product line B in another account, and then you would um you would segment the knowledge bases and the uh the controls and policies and and so forth that way uh so that's that's typically how we handle that perfect thank you nick okay so i think we got we have a slide here but i'm going to skip it um uh, and this was just kind of to go to to loop it back that you know we have these five these five core ai use cases but we also have a fully a fully featured grc platform but we won't talk about any of these things because there's 15 of them so we'll move right past that um so we're we're kind of nearing the end of this update and uh this uh progress report on these five use cases i just wanted to let everybody know make sure that everybody has access to our email addresses that are down there if you have any questions that you want to ask directly we're pretty good on email um and then really just to say, if you want to see Trustero in, uh, in great detail, there's a great bonus for you. We're going to give you a very stupid mug that heats itself up and keep, can keep your coffee warm for days. And I just love talking about this thing because I think it's the dumbest thing in the world. But I, <laughs> people seem to really like it. Um, and in fact, I had an extra one and, I, and my wife saw it and she's like, I want that. So I, just, I gave it to her and she's very happy now. Um, so yeah, so if you guys, I'll leave this QR code up for a little bit. If you're interested in seeing Trust Arrow, definitely go this route to do it so we can send you this dumb hook. Um, and then we also, on to the right of that, we have our link up to use security questionnaires for free. So security questionnaires is a free product. We have an advanced version like Nick talked about earlier as well, but it's totally free to start. I think we give you 10 security questionnaires. And I think for most people, um, like that's probably enough for at least like a quarter or a half of a year. Um, to get their security questionnaires answered for free. And then if you really, really like it, you can buy a package of, of more questionnaires from us. Um, but I mean, 10, I think 10 is a pretty good deal and a good place to start. And the last little plug I'll give for Trustero, because we're really proud of this and we're very proud of Jenna, who's on the phone, who runs customer success for us, is that uh, we won best support from on G2 and we, we beat some companies that are much larger than us. Um, so we're really proud of that. Um, that we had best support in two categories, actually. So cybersecurity, uh, sorry, cloud compliance, which is like 500 companies, and then security compliance, which was about 200 companies. So we just wanted to show that off a little bit. Our customers really like us. Um, and I hope that you will take some time to scan that link and come find out why. We'd love to give you 30 minutes for an intro meeting. And then if you want to keep going, we'll, we'll give you some more time. Um, if there's any other questions in the last three minutes, I think we can answer them live now and then there's a good shout out good shout out for jenna there from evan thanks um let's see i don't i think we've answered most of the questions if there's anything else we'll give it 30 seconds and then we're probably just gonna leave this screen up for the until 145 okay we'll leave it up we'll be here until 145 if anybody asks any more questions we'll get them answered um thanks everyone for coming uh, the video version of this will be out in the next 24 hours, depending on how long Zoom takes to, to process it, and then you'll have it. Feel free to share it with anybody, and we hope to see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.